morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Divine Service. We're always pleased to be here, knowing our Lord promises to be with us here to speak words of forgiveness and direction to us, so that we may be strengthened in our faith and go forth to walk as His children. This is the first Sunday in Lent. A couple changes in the order of worship for, for Lent, uh, that the service folder does reflect those, mostly uh, the uh, hymn of praise is left out. You know, is omitted and also the Alleluia verse before the gospel is omitted during the season of Lent. If you look on page 3 also in your service folder, you'll see that the, all the couriers, as many as should be there, seem like they're omitted for the season of Lent too. Well, that's unintentional, see? Okay, we don't have all the courier there, but your response is always the same. Okay, you know this. And, uh, but I'll do my responses and you'll come in with Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. And it'll work well, even though it's not all printed there. So, our first hymn, hymn number 424, O Christ, You Walk the Road. Sins, O Lord, who could stand? But we give you gracious witness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned and thought, word, and deed, and then we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. That the call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague shall come to you against him. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample on. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him. And show him my salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. church or that following our Savior we may walk through the wilderness of this world for the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. See, our first lesson for this day is Genesis chapter 3, the fall of sin. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was, be, was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. And the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called on the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The servant deceived me and I ate. Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock, and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and thus you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and your pain childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And Adam said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust. To the dust you shall return. And a man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. The Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to join me as we chant the words of our gradual together.
second lesson, a reading from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, just as sin entered into the world to one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of the one man's sin. So the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. Yet because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man. Much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to the condemnation of all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise and honor our Lord for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after forty days, fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It's written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourselves down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came or ministering to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being the one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with a mighty fortress.
Father and from our dear Lord, our, our Savior Jesus. It's like Miss Joy is doing the children's lesson today, so the younger children would like to go out with Mrs. Stewart. Our text is our gospel lesson, The Temptation of Jesus, as we find it in Matthew chapter 4, I read again, verse 1 through 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It's written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Baseball season is almost upon us. In fact, spring training games are going on right now. And of course, in baseball... It's about this, this little white sphere that's a little bit less than three inches in diameter. And one of the hardest things in sports, I understand, is trying to hit this little ball with a round stick called a, called a bat. Well, I have a bat here. The actual bats that they use are bigger than this. This is, this is actually a weapon to ward off raccoons. You'll have to ask me if you. Okay. But if you have a bigger bat than this to... Uh, to work with, but still, I can't imagine what it's like in the, in, in the battered box, and these things could be coming at you at over 100 miles an hour. Or then again, it may come at 70 miles an hour or less, and it seldom, if ever, comes come straight. So if you're the batter, you just have a split second to decide when this ball leaving the pitcher's hand, if it's coming at 70 miles an hour or 95 miles an hour, or where it's going to go. So it's a hard task. It probably feels more like you're batting with, with one of these. The action is between the batter and the hitter. I mean, there's other people on the field. There's nine people playing defense at a time. And if the ball, the, what, the, what the pitcher wants to do, of course, is get the batter out. If the ball gets into play, well, then probably still get him out because his fielders will throw him out at first. At least that's, that's the plan. But if you strike him out now, you don't have to rely on the fielders. We're in the seasonal end. It started Wednesday with Ash, with, with Ash Wednesday. And today we see a duel between a devilish hurler and a unique hitter who's actually turns out he is a is a pinch hitter it's quite the contest and unlike athletic contests that we can get quite worked up about this one really does have not only consequences in this life but it has eternal consequences so if you're the batter you want to get better at, at what you do. So you can work out in the batting cage, you can get yourself in the prime physical condition, you can watch a lot of you can watch a lot of video or you can combine high tech and low tech. You can have the best video cameras and trash cans and the result could be astronomical. Some of you understand what I'm saying there. Okay? But if you want to succeed against the devil, we have ways to get better at that too. It's a way from us, looking back to our Lord Jesus. We know what it's like to strike out. Some of us know what it's like to strike out literally in, in baseball or in softball. And slow pitch softball, it's always kind of embarrassing if you strike out, but sometimes that can happen, that can happen too. But um, it's not just you that's striking out. See, your teammates are depending upon you, and other sports have their own strikeout moments. You know, the touchdown pass that's not caught in the end zone, or the, uh, or the kick that's not blocked uh, before it enters, enters the goal. And it's disappointing. We're often disappointed in life. Life doesn't always turn out as we had planned. It's not, we're not always as productive as we as we like to be, and we think we have it figured out, then these curveballs come toward us, curveballs of, of sickness or strained relationships or financial struggles. Maybe we're not fast, facing a 100-mile-an-hour fastball, but life can come at us pretty fast sometimes. And with our walk with God, and our, really, 
Sometimes we compartmentalize, but our whole life, really, see, is our walk with God. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God created beforehand for us to do. But the temptation is, is always there. The, the good that we would do, we find we're not doing. And evil would not, just like Paul, we find that we, we are doing and it happens. And we, we strike out. We strike out a lot. And that's discouraging. And it should be. If it gets to be comfortable, then that's a real problem. But we're, we're not the first people it's happened to now. We're not. It's been human history starting with the lead-off man. Actually, it turns out to be the lead-off woman. Should have been the lead-off man, but for some reason he seems to be out of position. I don't know if he's on deck or what, but anyway, Eve is the one who takes the temptation to start with. So here comes the deceptive hurler. What he does is... Uh, he throws his pitch down the strike zone, see, but he tries to convince you that it's in the strike zone. And for the woman, he made it look triple hittable. Not that she was necessarily going to hit a triple, but hey, it was looked like it was good for food, it was attractive to look at, it was desirable to know good and evil, to, to be wise. So he said, you can hit this. And she took, she took a big swing and she made good contact with her teeth right into the forbidden fruit. Then she gave it to her husband. Of course, he does the same thing. And it's not been the same since. A history of people striking out. But God in his grace always had this plan announced already in the garden that the seed of the woman would, he would be the one who would bring Deliverance. So he chooses one man, he chooses Abraham, and through his seed will come the seed, the one in whom all the nations of the world would be blessed. And this man's descendants are multiplied down in Egypt, but the bad news is they're, they're slaves, they're enslaved in Egypt. So God sends an old man there with a stick, and the old man's older brother, who also has a stick, so he can stick it to the Egyptians not with their sticks not by their power their might but with God's mighty hand and outstretched arm the stubbornness of Pharaoh's heart is no match for the power of God so we know the story God does bring them out and he, he brings them to the wilderness to the Red Sea and he gives them manna to eat and he provides water to drink and they're, to the, they're ready to enter the promised land and they rebel Numbers 14 and God says, None of the men who have seen my glory and my signs that I did in Egypt in the wilderness, and yet have put me to the test these ten times, have not obeyed my voice, will enter the land. Their dead bodies will be scattered over the wilderness. And this is all within the first year out of Egypt. He says, Tested me these ten times. What is meant by that? Well, you could go back. To, from the beginning of Exodus through this point in Numbers, and you can come up with ten times uh, that the people of Israel put uh, God to the test, or others say ten times just means over and over again, or maybe it's a reference to the ten spies who gave the evil report, or maybe it can be tied into the ten commandments that they've broken more than once. But in any case, it's not good. They have not been faithful to God, frustrated hitters. How frustrating must that be to God? Disastrous results. We know the cry of the umpire. The swing and the miss. Three of those. You're out! You're out of the garden. You're out of the promised land. You're out in the darkness, the outer darkness, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth that doesn't take three strikes. It just takes one. But I said before, as you already know, God has this plan to crush the power of the evil one. It's a pinch hitter. In baseball, the manager chooses his pinch hitters carefully. Well, sometimes it's just a matter of who's left he can send in, but that's not the case here. 
Because this is the one who's been chosen to fill this role from eternity. The one who will stand in our place. God comes in person in his son. And today, in our gospel lesson, we see him facing that unhittable, it would seem, hurler. He's been around for a long time by now and knows just which pitch to, to throw. He knows everyone's weakness, sex, the matter about sex or culture or financial situation or health. He uh, knows who can hit what and what, what can't hit. It's, he's got it figured out. He has great stuff in baseball sometimes they say people have electric stuff well maybe he has more nuclear stuff but here he comes and this man that he faces is still a man he has human needs like being hungry and thirsty and he has human emotions and he has desire but unlike anyone else he is the son of God so he hurls away master of deception makes those balls out of the strike zone look oh so hittable. But Jesus, the pinch hitter, doesn't swing. Not, not a single time. He has key eye. He has key answers. He, he answers with the words of the ultimate empire. It is written, he says. Three times he answers. All from the book of Deuteronomy. All from that time of Israel's wilderness wandering where they were failing again and again and again. He offers up the pitch but Jesus won't swing. And so he leaves for a time but he continues to come and tempt Jesus. He tempts through his friends and he tempts through his foes alike. He tempts through, through Peter and the other disciples who want to redirect Jesus in a way that would be more in line with what they think the Messiah should be doing of this world. Emphasis. He's tempted by his foes who do the same thing as Satan on more than one occasion. He asked Jesus for a sign to show that who he is, to show that he is the Christ. The pitches are there out of the strike zone, but he never swings. He never misses. Not a single time. So he won't swing at the pitches. Maybe he can swing from the tree. And he does. Satan works in the heart of Judas and Satan works in the hearts of others and sins that work and the deeds of sinful men but the Holy Son of God to hang there and die on the cross. Again, it's for us. Paul writes in Romans 5 in our words in our epistle lesson, yet because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to the condemnation of all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by this one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. And we are. You see, this wonderful switch goes on as we look to our Lord Jesus in faith and trust in Him. If you want to look at our baseball cards of life, He gets our lousy stats. And we get hit. Covered over with Christ, sins washed away, we're all MVPs. Okay? Back a thousand. No performance drugs enhancing drugs involved, no cheating. The perfect righteousness that is ours in Christ. And we go forth to live in his service. God said, well, here's the one you want to hit. You want to hit the pitch that I put in front of you to do the things that I prepared beforehand for you to do, walking according to my commandments. And as we do so, we get on base and we advance other people on base. Not as though we're trying to score to make our way into heaven because that's a free gift. But we're on the base, around the bases in service to our Lord. It's not easy. Temptation is always close at hand. 
We'll read in Hebrews chapter 4, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. And we have the keen eye that he had. That is, we have the same umpire's standard of the scripture that the Lord Jesus was using. The devil wants us to swing and miss. Jesus wants us to swing and hit in his service. Again, strike is what the devil wants, but in our Lord Jesus, we do the right thing. We have life forever in our Lord Jesus. It is a free gift. And we have life now to be lived, giving to those around us that they might be served they might have opportunity too to know of the Lord Jesus and it gives us a keen eye in scripture we use it so that we'll be in the game not that it's a game it's the life that we have in Christ for Jesus sake amen and now may the peace of God surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting Please rise for prayer. Merciful Father, though you created all things good through our first parents, we rebelled against your goodness and in pursuing our own way. We're under the curse of sin of its death, but we give you thanks for the mercy you showed to your fallen creatures and for your patience until at just the right time you did send forth your son as a new Adam to be the Savior of all, to be our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though we fall to the tempter and to his lies, your son was faithful as he was tempted in the wilderness, but was always, always resolute in doing the right thing. Count us righteous in Christ and give us his strength that we may endure in the face of trial, be steadfast and immovable before temptation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though sin left us isolated and alone, your Son restored us to you and made us your own children. By baptism and faith, continue to give your church faithful pastors, we pray, to speak your word and to administer your sacraments. Also give us faithful other church workers, such as deaconesses and teachers, to care for us in your name. Equip parents to teach the faith to their children, that all may know your goodness in your life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though you give us stewardship of your good creation, often we love the gifts more than the giver. Deliver us from our own affluence and save us from trusting in our possessions more than in your Son. Teach us to use what you have provided to help those in need and to relieve the poor, the unemployed, and the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though we deserve nothing of your kindness, you have shown yourself to be the strength of the weak and the healer of the sick and the hope of those who mourn. Hear us on behalf of those who are troubled in mind or body, the dying and those who grieve, that in their afflictions and pain you might sustain and heal them according to your gracious will and deliver them to everlasting life in Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though we are unworthy of a place at the table of our Lord, Yet you bid us to come and eat of his flesh and his blood, 
Give to us faith that we may come in repentance to receive this blessed food of life. Unite us in doctrine and holy living that we may show forth this harmony and witness before the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All these things, O merciful Father, and whatever else we need, we pray you to grant to us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper, we take this opportunity to greet one another with our Lord's peace. Continue with the verses and responses as we see them, see them on page 8. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet in mercy, you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks, and on Calvary, you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we drink his, as we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us like Abraham, our father, to trust in your promise. Now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us if we pray in his name, and as he has taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This too is often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we ask you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and always in fervent love toward one another. For we ask these things through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our last hymn. rise and receive our Lord's benediction. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Because God lays the force of things he would have us do. And we see that as we do those things, he does bring us blessings in this life. It's not how we earn eternal life, but he is the creator and knows the best way we should live. And he shows us what, what are balls and what are strikes. So we know which way which way to go. We have a oh we're gonna have a little reception after that too, if you would like to come and be a part of that reception. If you want to bring some goodies to share in that reception afterwards, that would be wonderful also. 
have a voters assembly today. I think we're going to meet down the hallway in the big classroom on the right. We'll exit here and go down there in a minute for those who are part of that. Uh, other announcements we should be making. Yeah, I'm going back to work tomorrow. <laughs> Robert's going back to work tomorrow. He's, he's been sick and now he's he's doing a lot better, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And he has a birthday coming up too, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. All right. I ain't older than dirt. Not older than dirt. Okay. How about his old ass dirt? Well, anyway, okay, now anyway, okay, other announcements, any announcements? Birthday's anniversary, besides Robert. Robert has a birthday. Friday, Robert, Friday, Friday's your birthday? Friday. Friday, be 67, and that's, that's the truth. He really will be 67, okay? Same age as my sister, Robert. She's old, okay? Um, well, let's sing. God's blessings to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings, dear Robert. God's blessings to you. I know I'll give you a hard time, Robert, but I'm really glad you're feeling better. That's yeah, wonderful. Too. That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, that's a nice thing one day. Did you and both of you go to school together? I did. It sure did. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 